pastors and ministry leaders, if we're going to effectively lead our congregations, we have to effectively have a deep personal relationship with Jesus. We have to have a healthy marriage or be healthy in our singleness, uh, and, and we have to be healthy in ourselves and, and emotionally, uh, and, and we have to Sabbath. Rest is a critical part of the spiritual journey, and, and I think it's such a key, key thing for pastors to lean into on a regular basis. In this session, I want to get extremely practical, talking about social media, and, and really in the next two sessions. In this session, I want to talk baseline when it comes to social media, and then in the next session, I want to talk some practical tips and tricks that are going to help you uh, effectively use social media, no matter how large uh, or small your church is. Uh, I'm also going to talk extremely fast, so I apologize in advance for that, because I've got a lot I want to cover in this session, uh, and a lot I want you to understand. And I also want to speak to the coronavirus and how uh, you can use social media uh, today or, or tomorrow uh, and then beyond tomorrow uh, effectively in your ministry to, to engage your congregation and in your community. This is a critical moment. This is a critical time in the life of the church. And for 10 years, I have been begging church leaders to lean into social media. And I've begun to see it uh, significantly over the last five years in particular. But, but tomorrow... Uh, is going to be one of those days that whether you've canceled services or not, I hope you won't cancel. And I don't mean I hope you'll gather people physically, but I hope you will lean into the opportunities that social media provides you to gather your congregation and reach your community. Uh, tomorrow, you, you ha your congregants have an opportunity to be one click away from inviting a friend who's likely not leaving their house, that's likely bored, that's likely anxious, uh, to hear from you, uh, their pastor, their ministry leader. And I hope you'll lean into that. Uh, but let's get into some practical aspects of social media. And, and to start, I'm kind of going to work backwards here. I'm going to talk about top 10 mistakes that churches make on social media. Uh, and these are mistakes that I've personally made uh, and, and that I have watched over the past decade plus uh, in social media. And maybe before I jump into these, I want to share how I got into social media ministry in, in 1999. So this was 21 years ago now. Uh, I was a youth minister. I was 19 years old. Uh, I had been a, a Christian for two years, and uh, I was hired to be a summer youth minister at St. Mark's United Methodist Church in Baytown, Texas. And on that first Wednesday night uh, at the youth group, uh, we had two kids show up, a, a seventh grade girl and a junior and high school boy. Couldn't be any more different. Uh, and I remember thinking, this is my youth group. How in the world? Am, what am I going to do here? Um, and, and how am I going to lead? And I remember that seventh grade girl asked me something that changed my life. She said, what's your aim? And I said, well, my aim is to, to, to build a youth ministry in Baytown, Texas that's going to reach all the you know, middle school and high school students in, in this whole region. She said, no, what's your aim? I said, I just told you what my aim is. She's like, no, what's your AOL instant messenger? Uh, and and when, in her asking that, she's, you know, I was like, what is aim? I don't know what AOL instant messenger is. She's like, you get that CD, you put it in your computer, uh, and you sign up for uh, this account on the internet. And, uh, and so in 1999, I signed up for an AOL Instant Messenger account. I was Nils BYX. Uh, it no longer exists. You can't look me up. Uh, and so I, I signed up for my account, and I connected with her and that junior you know, high school boy on AOL Instant Messenger. Uh, and in that time, uh, I, I began to build relationships. Literally that evening, the next day, I used the other ministry tool I had. So I had a, a computer, at the, the one computer in the church with dial-up internet, and I had a 15-passenger van, which is also illegal uh, today, and I went and picked up uh, about 10 of their friends, and we went bowling the next day. Uh, and, and what I found from day one of using social media is I took those digital relationships, turned them into physical relationships, and by the end of that summer, 40 students uh, in Baytown, Texas had accepted Christ uh, through digital ministry that turned into face-to-face -face ministry. Now, since then, I've, you know, things changed. MySpace came around, and then Facebook came around, and, uh, and, and I, I had the privilege of starting OnlineChurch.com and engaging with people all over the world that some could never go to church, uh, but we were able to use technology to engage them and build a spiritual community. So whether you're wanting to use technology to reach people that you might never connect with, or you're just trying to deepen connections with those that you're face-to-face -face with, social media has an opportunity to enhance your mission as a pastor and as a ministry leader in a very significant way. So let's talk about some mistakes, though, uh, that, that I've learned along the way over the last 20 years. The first mistake, and probably the most significant mistake, and I think this crosses beyond social media, is not listening. How many times as pastors do we get so focused on our message and getting our message out 
Uh, but, but if we would better listen, how much better would we communicate? And one of the most powerful things about social media is that we have the opportunity to listen to our community, to listen to what's important to them, to listen uh, to what's going on in their lives, to hear from our congregation and hear about their hurts and about their struggles or about the things that they're celebrating. We should be listening 90% of the time and talking 10% of the time on social media, but instead we're talking 95% of the time and maybe listening for 5% uh, if, if we're you know, paying a lot of attention in comparison to a lot of ministry leaders. So we need to be listening and prioritizing listening on social media. Now, I hope uh, that's something that you're doing, not just uh, in your digital life, but also in your face-to-face -face, uh, relationships as well and in ministry. The second mistake uh, that we make is trying to be on every platform, trying to be everywhere. The, the reality to social media is that today, uh, we, we have Facebook, we have MySpace, we have Twitter, MySpace still exists, by the way. We have Twitter, uh, we have Instagram, we have Nextdoor, we have LinkedIn. You cannot be everywhere. Uh, and, and so the reality is you've got to focus in on where, where is your community? Where are the people that you're trying to reach on social media and, and how do you best engage them? Now, what we did early days of social media 10 years ago is we'd set up a Hootsuite account and we'd get a MySpace account, and we'd get a Twitter and we'd get an Instagram. We'd just post everything everywhere and we'd hope it reached somebody uh, but it really would not connect anywhere because it wasn't practical and relevant for each platform well today they're all really niched out we're going to talk about the different platforms but I, I want to relieve you if you feel like you can't be everywhere you, you shouldn't be everywhere that's a mistake to try to be everywhere uh, maybe you should just be on one social network the third thing is spending too much time on social media now, I, I am encouraging, if you're not spending any time on social media, that you need to be investing in these platforms. You need to be investing in social media and spend time on these platforms. But I don't know how many people waste way too much time on social media. Like anything else in our lives and anything else in our ministry, we need to be very intentional about how we're investing our energy and where we're investing our time. And so when it comes to social media, I hope you'll set a clock. I hope you'll put it in your calendar and say, you know what? This 30 minutes is my social media time today. Uh, and really not let it run away with your clock because social media can absolutely waste your time. And so it's an incredibly valuable resource to your church and to your ministry. Uh, but, but be wise as to where you invest and how you invest uh, and, and limit uh, those times. And just as Justin said, we need limits in our lives. And social media limits is, is an important part of effectively utilizing this ministry tool. The fourth thing is doing the same thing and expecting the same results. Doing the same thing and expecting the same results. It's changing fast, the social media landscape. And I, I imagine if I'd start, if I kept doing AOL Instant Messenger from, from 21 years ago, I would naturally be irrelevant because AOL Instant Messenger doesn't exist. Or if I went all in on MySpace, I said, you know what, I've invested so much here, I can't abandon it. You know, nobody's spending any time there anymore. We have to adapt and adjust. The, the reality is even to content we post on Facebook is about five years ago, if you didn't have an image with a post, uh, nobody would pay attention to it because you've got to catch their attention. Well, today, 70% of all content consumed on Facebook is video. So if all you're posting is images, you're likely to get not catching anyone's attention because video is what's catching people's attention. We have to adapt and adjust. And while that could be difficult for us, uh, it, it is critical if we are going to be relevant in this new digital space that people are so engaged in today and, and the opportunities that we have in them. The fifth is assuming it's free. People often say, well, this is free. You know, social media is free. Uh, it is not free. Uh, the, the reality is it's taking your most invaluable resource and that's your time. Uh, and, and so by investing time into this, you're, you're giving uh, to these platforms your, your most valuable resource. And so, you know, I think just blowing it off as free uh, it, it is not the right mindset around this, is, is you've, got to, you've got to prioritize it as something of value. And then the other side is, is that social media advertising is the most valuable and, and the most return on investment of any advertising I've ever experienced. I, I remember 20 years ago in ministry, we always had an ad in the Yellow Pages. And I, would, I remember sitting around the executive team saying, do we want to get the $50 ad or the $100 ad? And we would debate that. Uh, and what does that ad look like? Well, social media advertising, we can directly target people in such a unique way for a dollar, two dollars. And, and so anyone with any budget can utilize uh, social media advertising and reach people 
in a very tangible and direct way. And so it, to use social media effectively, it is going to cost both your time and your money. And then the sixth is not responding, not responding. Now, th now this has to do with listening a little bit, but w think about starting a conversation and talking to someone and then just walking away as, as if, you know, like I didn't really want to hear your answer. I just wanted to ask you a question and pretend like I care. That, that, that's what happens so often in social media is when we post something on social media, we're starting a conversation because the, it's social, it's interactive. And so when we post something and somebody responds, the expectation is that we're going to respond back to their response. We're going to have a conversation. And that requires significant time investment, but, but you're starting a conversation and you're not going to effectively engage or have people in your congregation engage in that conversation, you're not effectively using social media. Number seven is feeding the trolls, feeding the trolls. H how many times do people get caught up in, in an argument on social media, whether that's a political argument or a complaint about the air conditioning at church on Sunday? Uh, when people are complaining on social media, we cannot let it burn us out. We cannot let it overwhelm us. We, we, we cannot over respond. Now, I don't think we can ignore every comment or every negative comment that we hear on social media, uh, but we cannot waste our time and energy feeding the trolls uh, because it doesn't matter in many ways what we do. Uh, it, it's gonna just continue and continue and it's gonna waste too much of your time. So don't feed the trolls. Number eight is ignoring the data, ignoring the data. Uh, one of the powerful things about social media is we can know who we're reaching, how effectively we're reaching them, how engaged they are, when they're online. We need to pay attention to this data that Facebook is giving us, that YouTube is giving us, that Instagram is giving us. Uh, pay attention to, to who you're reaching. Sometimes people think, I'm gonna get on social media to reach a younger generation, but Facebook will tell you, you're actually reaching people that are 60 plus. Pay attention to the data. And if that's who you're reaching and you wanna reach a younger audience, then, that, then change your content or change your targets or advertise maybe to a younger generation to engage a younger generation or an older generation if you want to diversify uh, older. So, so think about it, pay attention to the data that these social networks are giving you and, and to understand your effectiveness and where it is you want to focus. I was with a, a pastor uh, earlier this week and we were looking at all of his social media content. He has, he has a, a very large social media following. One of the things he assumed is that his video content is what was most popular and what they were spending the most time on. Well, it turns out it was pictures. Uh, for his content, pictures is what was engaging his following the most. So he is significantly shifting his content strategy uh, based on the data. And I think we've got to pay attention and we can obsess over data, but, but if we're not paying attention to it, we're missing a huge opportunity that we've never had before. Number nine is getting locked in on one platform, getting locked in on one platform. I, I, we're seeing a shift right now in the world of social media uh, here in America where the, the shift of popularity of Facebook to Instagram, uh, and people are having, or, or churches especially, are having a hard time shifting uh, their attention to Instagram, where, where so many more people are moving because it's limited. It doesn't have the same functionality as Facebook, and we're frustrated uh, because it, it doesn't work the same. Uh, but, but if we get too locked in on one platform, we're going to get left behind. Now, I'm not saying that you need to abandon Facebook today, but, but I think you do have to be flexible and adaptable to the changing landscape and, and where, these, where these things move. Uh, th this isn't, you know, historically in communications and in marketing, TV was the thing for 50 years. You know, radio was the thing for so long. Newspapers was the thing. Well, now it's diversified and, and I think we have to continue to flex and adapt to the changing landscape. And it's not likely that it's going to just lock in anytime soon. The, the likelihood that it's going to continue to shift and adapt uh, is, is natural in this ever-moving landscape. And then the 10th mistake that churches make is believing there's a silver bullet. Now, the silver bullet I constantly hear from pastors and ministry leaders is, I'm just one viral video away. I just need my video to go viral. Can you teach me how to get a viral video? And then our church is going to blow up. Then our ministry is going to reach the world. Um, viral videos is not a strategy. Uh, now, I do believe that it happens, uh, and, and I believe your church could have a viral video, uh, but that's also not a magic bullet. I've seen too many people that have a viral video and then nothing happens beyond that. So believing that there's a silver bullet when it comes to uh, social media is not the case. It's hard work. It's consistent investment. It's a consistent investment in relationships and prioritizing your time 
and intentionality on these platforms. So let's talk about understanding the platforms. I want to dig into each of the specific priority platforms. Now, there are dozens of social media platforms and really niche platforms, and we're not going to talk about those today, but I want to talk about some of the primary platforms that are out there, and, and I want to start with Facebook. Uh, Facebook is, is the most significant social network out there. It's, it's been around now for, I think, 15 years. Uh, Facebook today has 2.4 billion monthly active users, uh, and 74% of their users log in every day. And so while I mentioned the, this shift to Instagram, <laughs> Facebook is not a small platform, uh, and it's still, you know, is, is massively larger than Instagram, and 74% of people log in every day even younger people. Now, they're spending maybe more time on, on other platforms, but they're still logging in as if, like, as if they're checking their email uh, to see what's happening there. They're, they're not spent posting as much content. Um, but it, it is interesting to see uh, the, the shift that's happening on Facebook. And one of the interesting stats, too, is that seniors are the fastest growing group of Facebook users. And this isn't surprising that, that women over the age of 60 are, are the most prominent users uh, they spend more than two hours a day on Facebook on average uh, in, in the United States. And so if you think you're going to use Facebook to reach a younger audience, you know, you might actually be using Facebook to, to engage an older audience in uh, a more significant way. And, and the reality is they're there and, and they're building relationships there. And I actually believe, and we're going to get into this in the next session, that women over the age of 60 are probably going to be your best social media volunteers. They're, they're likely spiritually mature. They're likely now getting used to interacting uh, and engaging online. They have more time uh, capacity than, than other generations. And so uh, I, I think they're an incredibly valuable resource to you in this digital ministry opportunity. Um, I'm gonna move into Instagram. Instagram has a billion active users. Uh, there are 500 million uh, users use stories every day. This is a new functionality to both Facebook and Instagram. 89% uh, of the users are outside of the United States. So it's interesting where Facebook has, has such a significant following here in the US. Uh, Instagram is still 11% is in the United States. Uh, so that's over 100 million users here in the US. But, but it is a, uh, it's a massive platform, especially for younger adults. It, it is equally mixed. Uh, it was 52% female, 48% male, uh, where, where Facebook is closer to 60% female, 40% male. Uh, and it's the most popular traditional social, social network among U.S. teens. Uh, and, and we're going to talk about Snapchat in a minute as well, because that's the other big platform with teens. And then there's TikTok uh, that maybe we'll touch on uh, a bit as well. Um, so, so Instagram and Facebook are essentially Facebook. Uh, Facebook owns Instagram, and, and, and these are the two most significant massive platforms. And as you think about your platforms within these two, you know, one billion and two point three billion people on these two platforms collectively, uh, how you engage them in the different, you know, uh, accounts that you have. And so I want to I lay out a few accounts that you have and how you engage. So first is your Facebook profile. That's you personally. We all have a Facebook profile that has your face on it probably, and you share life uh, on that profile and you connect. I believe it's probably you as a ministry leader, your most significant ministry platform that you have because people connect to people more than they connect to an organization. So we often wanna build our church's platform uh, and, and we can have good engagement there, uh, but people are always going to connect to people more than they connect to an organization uh, when it comes to social media and these digital platforms. And so, so really prioritizing, how are you connecting with people on your profile? And then there's your page. Your Facebook page is where uh, you connect with people organizationally. Uh, and, and so that's where you, you have uh, that opportunity to share. And, uh, Nona Jones, who's a friend of mine who works for Facebook, will often describe this as your front porch, uh, where you're introducing people to your church or your ministry, where people can look on the outside, or maybe it's the billboard uh, that's out in front of your church, as you always think about church signs. Uh, well, what you would put on a church sign, you would likely want to put on your Facebook page. And then as you move into that, you have Facebook groups. Groups are where you build community on, on Facebook, and these can be private groups where people have to join, and this would be your small groups or your choir or your missions groups. And, and so as you think through uh, those various groups and, and groups that you're engaging in your church and in community, uh, you want to use that tool. And then moving to Instagram, you have your Instagram account. And the reality is because the way Instagram is structured, you likely have an account for yourself as a ministry leader, 
uh, and for your church as an organization and, and utilizing those two platforms individually and then even understanding we're getting to this next session how you use stories and, and how you use posts and uh, how you use IGTV and how you use Facebook Watch. There's a lot of functionality on these platforms and, and I think we have to figure out where do we spend our time? So if we have a Facebook profile and a Facebook group and a Facebook page and an Instagram account and an you know, Instagram account for our church, how do we keep up with all of that? And then I'm gonna share with some other platforms and the reality is you can't. You can't keep up with it. You're gonna need volunteers. Uh, you're going to need to prioritize your time you're probably not going to be able to do all of it. And so we've got to be smart and strategic and understand who it is we want to reach and how we want to reach them. Twitter is the other popular social network that's out there. Uh, but I want to compare this, and, and just as you think about prioritizing, a lot of ministry leaders like Twitter because it's simple. But the reality is there are only 330 million users of Twitter. You compare that to 2.3 billion on, on Facebook, it's, it's hard to say that this is worth the investment, now your community might be very Twitter heavy, but just because you like Twitter better doesn't mean that, that you should be leaning into Twitter uh, to reach your, your audience. Twitter users uh, are also 22% of U.S. adults use Twitter, 44% of U.S. 18 to 24 year olds use Twitter. So it is actually a younger audience that's there on Twitter. And so it might be a target that you want to reach, uh, but, but I, I, I want you to be realistic about where you're investing your time and how you're investing your time and energy on these various platforms. And, and I want to encourage you that if you're spending a lot of time on Twitter. Think about the numbers, pay attention to the data and where your community is and how you want to best engage them. Then we'll talk about Snapchat. About five years, well, maybe 10 years ago, uh, eight years ago, anyway, I don't know when it was. I was at a conference and somebody asked me about Snapchat and I said, there is no redeemable value in the social network, period. This is just dumb. And that's when I realized I was getting old, you know, when I, when I said that, uh, because it, it just was ridiculous to me. And I knew how it was being used, and it was created to do shady things. Uh, the reality is, though, it, my wife got into it, and she started playing with all the filters, and they got into all the augmented reality. I started getting into it from as my, the nerd side of me, and uh, it's pretty cool. And it's pretty creative of, of the functionality they created. And the reality is, if because I got into Snapchat somewhat early, I knew how to use it to do Instagram stories. And these functions and features have helped me as a creative to create content for other platforms. And, uh, but, but the reality to Snapchat uh, is, is while there is a lot of darkness in this platform and while I think ministry leaders, whether you use it or not, I think you need to be aware because you need to guide your congregants and help them understand and help them understand for their kids' uh, sake. Uh, a couple stats here is 73% of the users uh, are in the United States. 90% of their users are 13 to 24 years old. 90% of their users are 13 to 24 years old and 190 million daily active users. So more than half of their users are logging in daily. Uh, this is where teenagers are co connecting. And a lot of reasons is because it's too complicated for parents to figure out. And so I think while if you, have a, if you have a youth pastor, if you are a youth pastor, you probably need to be on Snapchat if for no other reason that teenagers feel like you're there and maybe they shouldn't do some other things. Uh, but I do believe there's creative opportunities. Where people are gathering, there is a ministry opportunity. Now, as a senior pastor of a church, you know, in, in a community, I don't know that this should be your priority. Uh, but I, I think you've got to figure that out and figure out who it is you want to reach and how it is uh, you're going to reach them on those platforms. But let the data speak to you as to who you're gonna reach. Then there's LinkedIn. LinkedIn actually has uh, twice the number of engaged users as, uh, as Twitter, 630 million total users, 303 million monthly active users. This is where people are connecting professionally. And I think this is an opportunity for you to connect the business leaders in your church, for you to connect professionally with those in your church, or even to find out, hey, this person is in banking and maybe they could help us in the finance side of things, or this person is in marketing and they could help us in, with marketing. And, uh, and, and so connecting professionally, this is a good way personally as a ministry leader to engage uh, with your congregants on a professional level. Then there's Pinterest. Uh, as a man, I know very little about Pinterest, but I know my wife spends a lot of time there. Uh, and there's 300 million active users and 70% of those are female. And, and I think there's a lot of opportunities for children's pastors to be on there, get creative ideas. There's opportunities to engage and inspire 
uh, for women's ministry. There's opportunity on all of these social networks, but you've got to understand you cannot be everywhere, and Pinterest is a very unique platform uh, and, and a unique um, place to engage and connect uh, with a specific demographic. And then the last one I want to touch on is TikTok. Uh, TikTok is the fastest growing social network in the history of social media. The fastest growing net social network in the history of social media. There are 800 million monthly active users on Twitter today. That's almost three times Twitter, and, and TikTok is, is less than two years old. 60% uh, of US users are between uh, the ages of 16 to 24 years old. 56% uh, of users are male. This is a massive ministry moment and opportunity in the world of social media. As a 39-year-old man, I have a hard time understanding it. I'm learning it. I'm watching it. I'm paying attention to it. Uh, if you're looking for a ministry that's really doing a great job on TikTok, I would look at Life Church and Craig Rochelle. Uh, they're doing a great job of taking his sermon content and putting it on uh, TikTok. It is a unique platform, but you're seeing a big shift, even with celebrities like Will Smith or Kevin Hart uh, that are jumping on this platform, and uh, Howie Mandel. Uh, that, that if you want to look at it, of how they're beginning to interact and build relationships, the bottom line is it's videos that are between 15 and 60 seconds long shot in vertical form. And, and you can get very creative in that amount of time, and then they loop. They play over and over again. Most of those are lip sync videos or dancing videos, and, and that's how it was built. Uh, but, but understanding it, just because that's how it was initially built doesn't mean it's how you have to use it and how people are going to engage with you and where it's going to go. And so that's the functionality, and I think this is a platform that we cannot ignore, uh, that, that we need to be paying attention to and figuring out how we most effectively engage, because if it has grown this fast to, uh, to 800 million users, uh, I, I don't think it's going to be disappearing any, anytime soon. And, and Instagram is actually already copying its functionality uh, in its app. And, and Facebook has created a, an exact copy of it called Lasso uh, here in the United States uh, that, that they're testing into the market uh, to see how people engage with that. And so this is a format that I think is going to stick around for a while. Another interesting stat about it is the average user on TikTok. This is a little overwhelming uh, and might be a little nauseating for you. Uh, but the average user on TikTok spends 52 minutes a day on the platform. 52 minutes a day on the platform. Uh, that is a lot of time that people are spending on TikTok. Uh, and the average user opens the app eight times per day. It has the attention of teenagers uh, around the world. And I think we need to be paying attention to and figure out how we can bring the gospel into that, that medium, into that platform. So now I want to talk about responding to the coronavirus using the internet. So I shared earlier that we're going to talk about this, and there's a moment uh, for churches. And so I've got three tips that, that I want uh, to speak to around this. And, and the first is, is what we're doing today. Engage with live streaming. Uh, and so we could have easily canceled this conference, but, but I think we made a wise decision to say, you know what, let's, let's still gather. Let's use the, the resources that God has provided us with the internet, with cameras and computers, uh, to, to live stream uh, this platform. And you, you, might, you might say, well, I don't have the cameras that, that they have at Pidcod Church, and I, I don't have the sound equipment, and I don't have uh, the fancy computers or whatever they need to do that. The reality is you do. Uh, if, you have, if you have a smartphone, you have everything you need to live stream your church. Uh, actually, this is the other tool that I would recommend. This is about $10 on Amazon. Now, you probably don't have time to buy this uh, today. This is this is called a selfie stick. Uh, if you've never heard of a selfie stick, uh, this is what a lot of teenagers have used. This, this little selfie stick here has a little tripod that I can set up, and I can set it on a table just like this, and I can set my phone. I can clip my phone right into it, and just like that, I now have a professional studio with a computer with an internet connection that can live stream anywhere, anytime, any place to Facebook, to YouTube, uh, into many other platforms. And so in a moment, anybody could be live streaming. Now, now let's actually open our apps. I want to walk you through this. If you have a Facebook account, uh, I'm going to open our apps to, uh, to Facebook and then go to a page. If, so if you have your church page right here, here we go, I'm going to open a page and then go to post and then click the button that says live and give it a title. 
and then you can push go live. And just like that, in just a couple of moments, you are now live streaming on Facebook to potentially the 2.3 billion people that have the Facebook account. And it's likely that everyone in your community and congregation has a Facebook account, whether they log in regularly or not. Uh, you can be live streaming through Facebook Live in a moment where all you need is the smartphone in your pocket. And if you don't have one of these tripods yet, just take a bottle of water and just tee it up right next to it and it can just hold up or put it in a corner. There is a way that you can do this. I would actually recommend just a few tips around live streaming with your phone. Uh, I would do it in, in vertical, so straight up and down. Most people consume Facebook Live uh, on their mobile device. And so consider doing, if you're doing it on a phone, uh, consider doing it in vertical. Um, and you can go either way, vertical or horizontal, but Facebook is actually gets twice the engagement when you post the video in vertical than in horizontal. Uh, the other is, is to put it on a table uh, or put it on a, on a little stand if you can, uh, because the stability, when you're moving your arm, if you're trying to hold it for 15, 20 minutes, uh, you're gonna get a lot of wobbliness and it's gonna create nausea for the person watching it. And so set it up, set it in a corner in a room, uh, do something to just create stability for your phone. But these smartphones, have, have a great camera. They've got a great video. Uh, I actually bought the cheapest smartphone I could find on Amazon the other day because I've been testing it. It's an Android phone. It's $50. And, and I can Facebook Live on that phone. Um, and, and, it's, and it functions pretty well. So, so I believe whatever device you have in your pocket, you're ready to live stream tomorrow. As, and, I, and I would say even if you're having people gather, it's likely that a good portion of people, just because they're anxious, are not going to gather and bring it to them, uh, help keep them engaged with your congregation in this time. The second thing that I want to encourage you to do is connect between Sundays. We're going to talk about this in the next session of how you effectively use social media to engage on a, on a consistent basis. Uh, but but don't, don't wait until next, you know, and, and figure it out or just do Sunday to Sunday with your live stream. Understand that Facebook still works on Monday and still works on Tuesday, and Instagram is working on Wednesday and Thursday, and we have these social media platforms to engage between Sundays. It's actually the most powerful opportunity that we have to connect on social media. I also want to suggest that, that you put your service, you put your content available on demand. Uh, it, your, your content on demand is available forever, so it can live on, but the reality is there's a lot of people that maybe can't be there for that one hour. Uh, that, that you're gathering through the live stream. And if you make it available afterwards, they can watch it any time or they can share it with a friend uh, who, who maybe wasn't able to watch it in that moment. And so you're likely, we, we see that videos get 10 times the engagement after the live stream than they do uh, during the live stream. And so I encourage you, even if you're just clipping out your sermon, uh, make that available beyond uh, just that live stream time so that people can engage with it. But also, Post on, post on Monday, post on Tuesday, post on Wednesday, and respond to the comments on Monday, and respond to the comments on Tuesday, and build community throughout the week on social media, especially in this moment. And I believe you are going to develop habits that are going to impact your church for years to come uh, in this time. And, and I, I believe that God is going to use this. The other thing that I want to suggest around this with, with live streaming and social media is it has never been easier for somebody to invite a friend to church. Their friends are probably bored. They're probably anxious. They're kind of locked in their home. Uh, and if somebody shares it and sends a direct, I encourage them to send a direct message. Encourage them to send a text message and say, join me on, on our Facebook Live for our church service uh, if you'd like to. And here, here's a link. Make it easy for them to share. Encourage them to share because people are only a click away. They don't have to get their kids in the car. They don't have to go through the awkwardness of, you know, what's it going to be like? I don't know. Uh, they literally can come in in an anonymous place and then even maybe engage in the, the chat forum. So using this live stream and connecting between Sundays uh, is creating a huge opportunity for our churches today. And then the, the third uh, thing to be ready for uh, is around giving. I, I think there's a lot of tensions of if we're not going to gather around church, how, do, how, do, how can people give uh, to our church? What, what can people do uh, to give online? We, maybe we haven't even set up online giving yet. Um, I, so be ready to give online. There's two, two places, and I, I've never directly told anybody where to, where to use, uh, try to stay agnostic when it comes to technology, but, uh, but there are two, just because of the sake of the time, uh, that I believe the most easiest, the easiest places for you to engage your congregation uh, around, or be set up. You can be set up here in the next five minutes 
on either PayPal, which is probably the most popular platform. They take a higher percentage, uh, so I want to throw that caveat out there. But PayPal is a great platform. And then the one that's, that's targeted for the church is a company called Tithely. So it's T-I-T-H-E dot L-Y. Uh, so that's the domain. You can go there. You can literally have a donation platform set up within five minutes. Uh, I tested it last night because I wanted to confirm how easy is this. And I tested about eight different platforms last night. Uh, there's some great ones out there. Pushpay is a great one out there. Uh, Blackbot is a great one out there. But, but Tithely is the easiest to get set up on even easier than push or PayPal from my perspective. Uh, so, so really lean into, if, if you don't have online giving set up, uh, go do that today, get that set up uh, and be ready uh, for uh, the, the coronavirus uh, th this weekend. And so tomorrow, so you can right now during our lunch break, uh, go and set this up and, and you're ready to go uh, going into tomorrow. And as I wrap up, uh, I just have a couple more things that I want to add in uh, here as, as we transition to the Q&A. Uh, so the first tip uh, that, that I want to suggest beyond social media is to create a great second impression on your website. Create a great second impression on your website. So social media is your front porch. Uh, it's, it's a place for you to engage and, and direct people uh, and make a first connection with people, uh, whether that's a little inspirational video clip or an inspirational meme or a quote from the sermon, uh, but what's going that's going to lead them to is, is going to your website. And so as you're making a great first impression through social media, make a great first impression, a second impression on your website and think about that first time visitor. Uh, I, I can't tell you how many church websites I go to and I can't even find an address. I can't even find their service times because they just assume, well, we all know where the church is. We all know what time we gather and meet, and it's all content and information for members, and, and they wonder why nobody knew is coming. Make that first page of your website all about the volunteer. The church member is going to find what they're looking for. The church member is going to go find the connect group or the small group or the Bible study or the event that they're looking for. Uh, the, the person who's looking to attend your church is going to give up pretty quickly if they can't find uh, what to do with their kids, uh, where they need to go, what time they need to be there, how they should dress. So make a great second impression on your website. And, and the last thing here uh, before we jump, jump into the Q&A is don't forget email. Don't forget email. Uh, as, as we think about church communications and, and how we effectively communicate, I'm all about social media. But the reality is we don't own that, that communication platform. And, and so many churches complain to me of, I post on Facebook and nobody sees it. And, and, and you know what? We're limited to what Facebook will show people. And so we might build a following on Facebook or Twitter, uh, but we can't make Facebook show it to our congregation. We can't make Facebook show it to everybody. If we have their email address, we can directly communicate with them. The reality is even with email, only about 15% of people open uh, the emails that we send them on average. And so typically churches are a little higher than that, around 20 to 25%. But it's the most direct communication that we have uh, with our congregation, maybe next to SMS, text messaging communication. Uh, I'm not going to dive deep into that, but uh, email is an important communication tool. It's not social media, uh, but we need to be able to communicate to people in multiple paths. So don't forget email uh, when you're engaging people beyond social media.